Hi, welcome. So this is the August 1st meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee for Amherst. We currently have a quorum. Um, I guess we should go ahead and make that announcement. I can say it if you want. Okay, sure, that'd be great. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, this meeting of the TAC is being, con being conducted via remote participation. Okay. All right. So we can get started. Um, all right. So, okay. So let's just go ahead for Amber. We'll go ahead and just um, do a roll call so then Amber can, I can just tell her who's here and everybody can just say that they can hear and be heard. Kim Tremblay here. So Tracy Zafian here. Marcus Smith here. Stefan Treach here. All right. And we have a special guest, Rob Kostner. You can talk to, right, Rob? I can, but I muted myself, unusually. Yes. But. Okay. And uh, we're in Guilford, Maureen is facilitating. Okay, thank you. So, um, so Rob had uh, reached out to me recently and talking about the Massachusetts Central Rail Trail and how Northampton had uh, passed a resolution recently just saying that they would support completion of the trail and uh they're you know they're reaching out to other communities along the trail as well and so rob was interested to see if tac would like take some action too or just say that we you know if we're in favor of it and then it would also go there would be a an amherst version of the resolution that would go to the council for approval so rob take it away hey for, first thanks tracy guilford uh let me see who else. Kimberly and Marcus, who I haven't met before, although I think I've heard of you. Uh, Guilford, it's good to see you again. Um, I'm also down on a farm. No potatoes, just a lot of grass and a huge amount of apples. And I've been doing that all day, picking the summer apples. But okay, um, back to Massachusetts now from Pennsylvania and North Carolina. The Mass Central Rail Trail in the Amherst to Northampton area is known better as the trail. We're the first of, in fact, we're the first 12 miles of the trail here. And also first chronologically, we, we started here in the early 1990s. And uh, the trail though extends from mile zero at Northampton to mile 104 near uh, North Station in Boston. And uh, quite a bit of it, about two thirds is now either constructed or under under construction as a multi-use path, as a bike path, but also obviously like the neurotic used by all sorts of other folks. And I think in places it will probably remain not as an asphalt paved trail, but as stone dust, so probably even accommodate equestrians. Anyway, the um, there are 26 municipalities along the trail. And what this is about is getting support for resolutions from each municipality, as well as perhaps some that are nearby to share with uh, their state legislative uh, representatives, senators and members of the, uh, uh, I guess it's called the great general court uh, of Massachusetts, the, the, the representatives in, in Amherst, Mindy and Joe, I guess, would be our representatives. But anyway, each of the communities uh, is being asked to draft and hopefully the councils will then approve a resolution that would go to uh, both our reps and also to the governor's office. Um, I'm here not just as an individual, but I'm a member of, actually was a former president of uh, a nonprofit known as Norwatic Network, which encompasses representatives from across Massachusetts. We have folks from the Boston area, in the middle of the Commonwealth, and quite a few from out here as well. Um, I was the president of it uh, between 2020 and 2022. One of the founders of this back in the year 2000, uh, along with some folks who are no longer around, like Art Swift, uh, who, I've had other distinguished roles. John Cool, uh, was Chamber of Commerce uh, Executive Director for a while. 
Barbara Francis, who no longer lives in Amherst, was the one who really took the initiative to get this and several other folks who've moved on to other things. Craig Delapena is one of them, who's one of the founding members and is the current president from Northampton. And uh, we managed to get Northampton to adopt a resolution um, last month. And that's what I believe Tracy shared with you as a model. And uh, there's some Amherst centric things we might include. Um, and I'm happy to draft a version for the council, but what I'm basically seeking today is your, um, how should I put it, your recommendation that we do something like this council. Since you're an advisory committee, I thought it would be good to start with you. Tracy and I have worked together for years. So long ago, before there was a TAC, there was Town Transportation Committee, which I was a member of, and I chaired it and vice chaired it long, long, long ago, last millennium. I also was the chair of the, or maybe still am even, the chair of the advisory committee for the DCR's advisory committee that oversaw the redesign and rebuilding of the Norwalk starting, I guess it was 18 years ago, back in 2006, and took about a decade to get just that redesign and reconstruction completed. So it's a big project. And what we've done is we've, this nonprofit that I've been a member of for 25 years now, uh, what we've done is we've raised several hundred thousand dollars to help choir sections of the, of the, the right of way to um, basically do studies of, of, of um, basically work that needs to be done, bridge bridges that have to be replaced and so forth. But we need to get basically the Commonwealth and the federal government to help support the final reconstruction and the construction of the completed trail. And um, one thing that we did was we raised, uh, I think it was, it was a good fraction of $100,000 to do a study of the economic impact of completing the trail. And what it found was that, you know, the, the dollars that it will take to actually complete the trail will be well rewarded by um, transportation and other economics to the entire Commonwealth. Some of them in the area of tourism and economic development to the central part of the Commonwealth. Uh, obviously here in, in Amherst, some people think we have a, a bit of bit too much too much student traffic. And as a faculty member at UMass, I, I can tell you I never had a parking permit uh, myself. I've always biked to work or walked to work. Occasionally I've snuck in with my car hours when you're allowed to. But it'd be really great to fulfill the promise of some of the um, connections we have to the to the to the Norwalk and to the Mass Central Trail as a whole. So the Norwalk is the westernmost 12 miles of the Mass Central Trail, and have more folks use it for uh, for transportation. I doubt we're going to be using. I'm expecting people to bike all the way from Boston to come to UMass, but uh, maybe someday with fast electric assisted bikes, some people might try that. I know we're going to do a ride later this summer at the end of the summer. From, from North and Austin on, on the parts of the trail that are complete. Anyway, so what I'm asking you guys to do, if you haven't already looked at it, if Tracy wants to put it up, she, well, I can do uh, that. See whether we can uh, recommend recommend a, uh, a resolution in the style of what Northampton City Council adopted uh, on the 11th of July. And I'm happy to draft it, maybe Tracy or any of you who want to have some input into what the language, I'd be extremely grateful. Uh, but uh, we'll be one of 25 more communities that have yet to adopt it. And even if we're not number one, we can be number two because we can try harder. So can okay. you, everybody see that? So, Tracy, so I, don't, like I don't know, Rob. So you're you're coming in a little, a little bit with the sound. I don't know if that's on my end. My internet has been really sketchy lately. Does anybody else having that? Can, can, so I don't know. Can you guys so we can okay? we can ask maybe if you get rid of your video or something, <laughs> if that helps. But um, so Could be this, uh, I've got some music on in the background. Would that maybe? Let's I don't know. There to... was just some like interference type noise, but 
but again, my own connection. I re I reset my router this morning because my connection was awful. So no, I was having some difficulty hearing him. In yeah. places. I mean, I couldn't hear him. It was like stuttering. Yeah. Could have just been me stuttering. You know. No, I don't think you're stuttering. All right. So here's the resolution that went that was approved by Northampton, you know, just in terms of that uh the council there, you know, has supported uh increasing safety, making them more accessible, walkable, cyclable. Uh, yeah, so there, yeah, many Go of ahead. these things are 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 boilerplate uh -huh. that can be just taken up. So, some are specific to Northampton. We we of course have UMass and the, the Swift connector, which are particularly uh, important for, for for Amherst itself. And I think I would put in something like that. And uh, um, yeah, and then um, you know how it aligns with like priorities and. And so, yeah, I mean, most of the language, I mean, except for, you know, some of the, be it resolved, the Northampton yeah, Council. Yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, some of these updates are pretty easy to make. Um, and I will say too, Rob and I talked this morning. Um, so the nor the rail trail goes through District 5 on the eastern end, you know, from um, the center of Amherst, like along the part that goes out to Beltertown. That's all in District 5. Um, and then uh, the part that cuts through Amherst College then goes out to Northampton and like to Hadley, that's district three. So um, it's, and, um, I mean, I know with resolutions, right, they all have to go through GOL. I can also reach out to TSO to see if, um, consider, you know, there are members, there are district five and district three counselors on uh, GOL and TSO, so. And I should say, I, I've reached out to uh, four counselors now. One, one is the president of the council, because I, I know I know <laughs> many of the counselors. And uh, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn has this resolution, and she's on vacation now. So I, I emailed her a couple hours ago or an hour ago before this meeting. And I think I think she'll be on board with this. Yeah. Um, two of the councils I've spoken with are, are not in the, the districts mentioned, but this is an all Massachusetts. In fact, it's in some ways an all New England <clears throat> effort. Uh, there's a large no, New and, England work effort. And uh, Rob, you and I had talked too about how, like, I believe that the Amherst Town Council already did a resolution previously supporting the trail, like from an economic development perspective. Uh -huh. Is that right? And uh, yeah, because there had, was, there had been a study done of the economic impact of having the trail. That's And, and that's it, what what our organization funded right. and, yeah. and we appreciated the council doing that. <clears throat> this is really, this is really something that's, uh, um, it's really addressed to, as you can see the be it further resolved at the, at the very end, uh, it's really being addressed to Joe and to uh, Joe Comerford and in our case, uh, Mindy and to the, basically the DOT and the governor's office and so forth. But I'm not sure the, We'll have to figure out to whom else it's going to go, but uh, your advice on this would be greatly appreciated. And I mean, the you know, the current administration, uh, as well as the Baker administration, was pretty supportive of expanding rail trails, rail trail access, you know, making, increasing the percentage of people who live close to a trail. And I mean, since the new administration came in, right, they've had a number of announcements about the grants that they've been funding for a rail trail expansion. So is this, yeah, so lot, is this trail still short, a lot of the money it needs or? So a lot of the, obviously the trail building tends to happen in Massachusetts. It's the municipalities, the towns and cities are the, where most of the money gets spent. Um, the DCR and the Mass DOT are not only involved, but they've, they've basically prepared plans at the moment, it's essentially the, the right-of-way plans are available. That was done a couple of years ago. We have a promise from the DCR and, excuse me, from the DOT to prepare basically build-out plans. So the kind of plans that a contractor would need to, to actually complete the projects. Some of them are complicated. There are bridges, lots, lots of bridges further to the east. And there's even a tunnel. Okay. Uh, it's it's the old railroad line, so they're, they're, those have to be retrofitted to accommodate 
sure. bicycles and pedestrians. But uh, but that's a big project. It's it's, it's the, the design work is actually there's money in the budget now for DOT to do that, and uh, uh, but it's going to cost quite a bit to actually build out the stuff. And uh, I think this is a way to try to help help that process along. Okay. So does anybody have, do any members have any questions or? I mean, I think we need to push this. Um, I assume a lot of it, this sort of incentive will come from grants to the municipalities to do this. Is there a, an idea to kind of um, market the rail trail, kind of like the WNOD in DC, where it's more of like a, Destin, you know, not just for traveling to places, but you could, you can do act things along the way, or like the CNO Canal Trail, yeah. where you can go camping, you know, along the way and that sort of thing. Yeah, Marcus, that's exactly so. Craig, Craig De La Pena, among other things, he was a former railroad guy, but he he operates a bed and breakfast at mile minus three, I guess, in in Florence, and. Uh, he he's he's very attuned to this. I hope it's not just for his own interest. He's not going to get much <laughs> business from this, but but he's aware. He, he's he's a professional. He's a real, but he he basically buys corridor and he makes sure it's available, and then it's given to the to the Commonwealth mm. the public entity. So he he's been he's been essentially a, a land conservator to make trails happen. He used to be the communications <clears throat> director for. The rails to trails concern now rob so, so it's if you know the rails to trails movement it's largely it's sorry it's, it's largely looking in the way you described it to attract people from not only locally but from around the world actually to, to use this as a mm -hmm. as a if you will, touristic and exploration you know uh, as well as practical transportation between you know, for example would you know, it be lots of something that could be made into like a state park in the end it, it, so the DCR, of course, already owns the right of way between Northampton and Amherst, and yeah. probably more of it would come under the just of the, of the DCR, which is the state park. I think uh -huh. like the state parks. Okay. And and I don't think like Marcus had asked about we, like we, local we, funding, but I I does it doesn't rely on local funding, right? The funding is all at the state level. Because it Plus, is a I DCR. mean, it, it would be yeah. given grants to the local funding. With grants, it, yes, so, typically that's still. the way it would work. Although the, the DC, Marcus, the DCR um, and Mass DOT provided the funding and managed the reconstruction, the redesign reconstruction for for the because it was over. It was three municipalities, actually slightly into Belchertown, so four municipalities, and I think that'll be the model more and more, but but. Or the idea is that this is not just a single rail trail, it's a network. I mean, yeah. It's our nonprofits network. Right. And there are lots of things, bike paths, bike lanes and things that are linked to it. And I think that's where additional grants to municipalities will come to have the municipalities mm -hmm. improve the linking infrastructure. Right. So can if you're muted. Uh, unmute yourself, yeah. yeah. Rob, who... Um maintains you know the rail trail like who's responsible for that right I mean I noticed like for example in parts of Northampton um yeah through Northampton where they're like root you know routes have maybe made humps in the rail trail they're highlighted right. or you know occasionally things wash out and what have you like yeah. so, the, so the, D, the DCR maintains its oh. right of way in and Northampton does, and in fact, what things washing away. I bike. I biked out to a doctor's appointment in the Florence uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and I was surprised how rough the trail was west yeah. of Mile Zero. So it's really not the the MCRT, but it's it's their Northampton Greenway or, or ah. whatever, whatever they call it there. Mm -hmm. That one, that one apparently had a big, not just a washout, but there was some sewer work that needed to be done. It was just finished. And Northampton has a big grant. Again, it was a grant to the city of Northampton to, to repave the trail all the way out to the western end. I guess near Look Park. And oh, cool. Perhaps it's even to the edge of Williamsburg. Oh. 
So, so that'll be good. But you identified uh, an ongoing problem, which is, or not just something we have to live with. There are trees and the trees have roots and the roots do lift the asphalt. And, you know, yeah. we were in a continued uh, yeah. sort of and... dance with the tree roots. And But DCR is in charge of this. I think what'll happen is municipalities, unless they, if they own the underlying land, they'll be in charge of maintenance. If the DCR were to take it over as a state park, mm -hmm. then DCR yeah. would have that responsibility. Eventually it may happen. I think once it's connected, right. it's very likely to be a DCR maintained yeah. project. Okay, well, thank you, Rob. So, um, yeah. I mean, it sounds like um, Rob is gonna be updating the resolution to bring it to, um, to the council and to GOL. And um, I just saw that the council president, Lynn Griesmer, just emailed back and said she's happy to co-sponsor the resolution and shepherd it through GOL as a GOL member. So that should help okay. in that well, it I, could it could I be taken that. up. That's um it, it could be taken up, she said, you know, by September. So you had talked about adding a whereas related to the transportation advisory committee or something. So I think that that I mean, we can, yeah, I wonder, we can, we can have a motion to do that. Um, Kim. Yeah, I would, I, I mean, I think we should, we should try to custom, I mean, I mean, Rob obviously has the most expertise in this, but we also understand our transportation situation here in town. So perhaps after he, um, uh, uh, uh revises it in a Amherst centric manner, we could also maybe add, you know, a few this tiny little bits just to help it make sense for our um our overall grand plan in town and then pass it along to the council no, so i make yeah. that yeah i yeah. uh suggest we do that <laughs> well hold on yeah i mean um right. here so right. i mean i did just start i'll just show like okay. i just as we're talking i just started uh and then we can all agree so, on it and, and just um, send I mean, it. I just said here, right? Like, whereas the transportation committee, yeah, you know, right. discussed, <laughs> discussed. I mean, we can just we can just we I can mean, just say supports mm -hmm. the completion of the the um, com completion of the of the, you know, the Mass Central Rail Trail. I mean, I'm just trying to get the words out, you know. And you type you know, MCRT is good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, For, you know, for ex ac accessibility, safety, safety, and, you know, promotion of, of bicycling. Walking. Bicycle, bike, bicycling walking and you know rail trail commuting you know bike alter alternative transportation I don't alternative, know. not motorized vehicles <laughs> commuting and you know and and also you know rail trail tourism because i mean i really feel like right you go to the cape the Cape Cod, Cape Cod does a great job of marketing, like to what Marcus was talking about, tourism. Cape Cod, like everybody, well, a lot of people have been on the Cape Cod Rail Trail. It's super marketed, right? They have maps and they promote yeah. everything around the rail trail. And I mean, and that economic development study showed how much of an impact the other trails have, like this, this cross state trail has. Um, so it would be good if, you know, there were other... There was promotion outside of the Cape, if you will, or outside of Martha's Vineyard. And because I've also, you know, biked on Martha's Vineyard. And I mean, there are maps and things out there. The regional planning commissions have made maps and, but it's still just the promotion piece of it, like how positive it is. So. Yeah. I'm looking on the interactive map. It seems like tourism. I guess between Rutland and Holden is a bit interesting, but. I mean, wow. there's certainly places, you know, it goes by what you certain Yeah. Everywhere where we could have through, you know, opportunities for making it something, right? Have people do the rail, the mass central rail trail over mm. a couple of days and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I, mean, the idea, I love the idea of um 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 biking to a campsite 
I love that. Well, mm-hmm. and, and I, one rail trail I really liked, it was in Minnesota. It was called the Root River Trail. And it went from community to community. And it was like connected with like camping and B&Bs and stuff. And you could do it. And there were trails also in Wisconsin. When I lived in Wisconsin, like the um, Elroy Sparta Trail. You know, again, there's like multiple segments of it. And they're all like promoted as um tourism right in new york you have the erie canal you have like places i mean people really do like a lot of people really do prefer you know for recreational tourism purposes to be on off-road trail like trails that aren't in the middle of the road (laughs) um and so it's always going to draw and it draws a lot of like just like the cape cod trail right it draws a lot of families and kids and i mean it's just so much nicer it's almost like a a ghost trail right you can go from the northampton school to the belchertown state school to you know all of these kind of nasty places there's the rutland prison camp all sorts of things (laughs) well we don't need it it could be a movie a movie set right even now i mean northampton like as i think kim was saying right when you're in northampton on king street there's all those rail like the rail trail signs Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. some of it is a signage and right you can connect from amherst to northampton to east hampton or you can go out to like florence you can go to look park i mean there's so many connections there so yeah it, by, do, by the way, do a lot more. The, the other project we're involved with is the Northampton to New Haven line. So, you know, not only can people bike to Boston if they want to, biking to New Haven and I guess on to New York and Philadelphia oh. is in the mix too. But, well, but, I mean, there's a whole like East Coast trail, right? All the way to Florida and things. Yeah, but. Yeah. but I'm saying this is, I think this would be the most attractive part. Of, <laughs> it's beautiful. Of, yeah, for sure. Such a, such a, such a connection. Um, and the farmland and everything. Um, so uh, do we want to, Kim, was this kind of what you were thinking or would you see that we could also add other whereases? Well, I was just thinking that we just help like look at whatever um, Rob, I mean, I was just thinking that we could enhance with our community specific yeah. um, transportation knowledge, whatever it is that Rob ends up Sure. Exactly. So I think that one way we could do it right is um, just with open meeting law is we could take some kind of like vote today, like some motion and vote mm-hmm. to support it. And then yes. for open meeting law, you know, once Rob has drafted, and I think he's going to turn it around pretty f- quickly so that it gets to GOL and then it gets to the council. And I don't know if T- TSO wants to weigh in as well, but the um, then it could I mean, we could distribute it to TAC members. We just couldn't all like have a conversation about it. So right, right. if people had comments, we just have to go like right back to like Rob or something. So by the way, there are something is, when I saw how quickly Tracy typed that in, I, I may edit it. Have I'm an editor <sighs> for math journals, but I with your with your permission, if you'll permit the chair to help Rob. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I can help Rob. I can help Rob, and then we can distribute it. But, but specifically, the things the things that I suggest we include are something related to UMass, yeah, and then the Swift connector. Um, Amherst College, I should mention, if you go to their page that has the information about their nearly five billion dollar <laughs> endowment, they have a nice public web page, and you know what the illustration is. It's the Norwatic Rail Trail right through the campus. I mean, yeah. Amherst College basically straddles the biggest segment of the trail. Right. As far as I know, maybe no, that's the, true. The trail. Yeah. Perhaps so, you want Amherst College to endorse it as well. But well, I, um, anyway. What I'm, hoping, what I'm hoping for is they'll actually help pay for it. <laughs> well, but, uh, I see their students on it all the time. I mean, it is right. a big attraction for all and, of and, and I also think, too, like once the Valley Bike Share or whatever whatever it's going to be called when it comes back, once it's up and running again, like that is a huge way for people, for UMass students, Amherst College students to get from campuses, like out to the malls, to Northampton and so on. Yeah. Like that, there is a lot Tracy of- Tracy uh, and Kim, I just wanted to say hello. I'm so, uh, I yeah. really sincerely apologize. No, that that's I am fine. Here. And it's Chris, Chris I, did, I did see you and Amber note that Chris is here and she's been here for yeah. a couple minutes. So she came around six, but thank you for being here. And um, yeah, I really apologize. This. No, absolutely. That's fine. Um, okay. 
And okay, so so Rob, I, I think why don't you and I, we can also work offline, but can we just take a motion as a committee? I'd be happy to share once Rob and I have coordinated offline, I'd be happy to share. Okay, so I make a motion that we support yeah. the um the okay. rail trail. Um, yeah. um what so is I mean, it? Resolution. Resolution. The resolution. Or, and the, the creation department. of a similar resolution for Amherst, right? Correct. Yes, so, correct. Okay. And so this is a resolution okay. that would be taken to sure. each of the college boards of trustees as well as to the town of Amherst. Well, it's I think Rob said there's about 25 towns along the trail. And yeah. the towns. Okay, great. So Christine, thanks. By the way, nice to meet you. Are you on the phone? Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. Oh, can okay. you see me? Well, I just see a phone. Now I see a <laughs> I don't it's, want it's you good. to see me because I'm a bit harried <laughs> and sweaty. It's, it's okay. It's okay. But just it's it's good. It just it, it's it's a different <laughs> Zoom experience. Uh, let me say, say I think the I think the colleges and uh, so forth will be a different tier for this. Yeah. Uh, and and there will be other communities that aren't actually straddling the trail that are weighing in, but it's a community municipalities that are weighing in. Okay. And uh, this is really addressed to our representative. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, and, and if you look the at community. the Northampton resolution, right, it does say that it goes to like Joe Comerford, like in our case, we would send it to Mindy Dom and like other, we could even send it to our, you know, congressional legislators and so on. So, so should we um, vote on? So the... we can just like, I mean, so I was just using that general language that um, Kim was saying that we support the resolution and the passage of a similar resolution for Amherst. Yes. All those in favor. All those in favor. All right. Let's just like take a roll call vote. Just Kim. So Kim, Kim, I. Okay. Chris, I. Right. And Ma, Stefan, is, I. Stefan, are you still here? He was here. Yes, here. Yeah. Okay. I... okay. And um, so that's oh, all of us. Tracy, I. Five, five to zero. Great. All right. What wonderful. It's not nice to. Okay. I can't believe I once was a member of something a predecessor to this. It seems like a well, millennium was, ago. I think Kim, weren't you on that too? Weren't you I probably that? overlapped a tiny bit with Rob, actually, but well, that's that that's nice. It's it's been, a, while been a long time. I was yeah. on it when Art Swift was on it. I think you. And Art Swift was the chair once, right? If he, was, I he was the chair, and right. you know, I'm I'm famous <laughs> for Vice, so I was the Vice Chair. And... Yeah. So all right. Thanks, Thanks Rob. So I'd like to move yeah, on. Not, just you're going to move on if if well, you want. If you're talking about Amity Street, I'm happy to just stick around, but I will mute. I will mute. So okay, sounds good. And maybe we were really having trouble hearing you. You can feel free to. Well, and Tracy, turn off I, your saw, camera I, saw, I saw something about the um the uh the um railroad line too. I don't know if Rob could provide some kind of update in terms of like what was actually included in the statewide budget for east west so rail. chris can we actually have that conversation a different time i really would like to talk about um the roundabout at amity and we know we like to end our meetings promptly at seven <laughs> because we start having a lot of attrition as everybody says they got to go to dinner they got to go to their families and everything um i did yes i mean the governor's budget did approve get approved i mean maybe we can invite the palmer people back or a rob or something i would love to talk about that more another time yeah i because i couldn't quite tell if the funding for the um because then how do we actually get amherst rehabilitation funding if funding for the palmer station was there that part was unclear so it might make yeah. sense to pull. that would be i would agree i agree okay guilford are you available to talk about the um roundabout Yep, let me turn it on. That'd be great. Yeah, please. You, you. And I didn't know Guilford too. Like it looked like the drawing that was included with the memo that went to the council, you know, the council from you and the town manager. Like that that sketch was that actually like um, a UMass sketch or was that your sketch? Actually, it, you. Oops. UMass the, is actually the funded. Okay. UMass has funded all the design for this. All right, got it. So I know that, like, when um when Jason Skills met with us um at the last TAC meeting, like he also had um he had you know the 
the engineering drawings of like, it seemed like it had sort of more details than some of what's in this, but maybe, maybe I read it wrong, <laughs> but. Did he, did he go over it with you? He, he did. He went over it like each section. He talked about things that weren't included in the memo, including like um, striping the bike lanes at the intersections and other elements. But I, I realized, of course, that could be farther along too, and that these UMass plans have been, you know, were developed a while ago, right? I mean, my understanding yes. was that they're not like brand new. So, but we, did, we have done some updates. Um, so okay, great. So, so, do you want to see yeah, the? Yeah, right. can you please share and maybe just talk about <clears throat> the project? <clears throat> Can you see it? Yes. Do you see you so you see the roundabout drawing? You don't see anything else you're not supposed to see? No. Okay, good. Is that your sweet potato plans for the next year? No. Oh, okay, good. We let them we let them choose what they want to. They'll, they'll probably <laughs> they'll probably do soybeans next year. Yeah. Can you uh, zoom in a little bit, please? We can make this a little bigger. Hold on. This is Amity and University, right? Yeah, let me orient you. Yeah. I was going right. to ask which way is north. I think it's to the right. Is that right? North goes to the right. The University Drive goes to the right. Amity Street goes up and down. Mm -hmm. The This corner to the the left upper corner is actually where the Hot store is, which is going yep. on. And then hanger, the hanger is on the left bottom, left. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the roundabout. This is the revised drawing. This is not what was presented to the town council because we actually added a crosswalk here at the top, at the top of the page. And we added the sidewalk right there. Mm -hmm. So the goal, so the goal is to just take the, intersection and turn it into a roundabout to kind of slow traffic down and actually let it flow better. Um, it flows really poorly when the traffic signal is there and there's little traffic. Um, and it, well, nothing flows through it when there's a lot of traffic. It's really slow. So well, the and, there's no, and there's no like right turn lane, like, I'm sorry, left turn lane, you know, for example, like end of day commuter traffic that's on University Drive North going south mm -hmm. right so there's it's it seems like there's backups there and so. yeah there's no there's no left turn lanes at all so all four legs will back right. up if someone's turning exactly. left. exactly and there's and there's also issues with the signals i don't i don't know as somebody who drives through a lot but go ahead so the goal is to just take the signals out and then put this roundabout in and then connect everything with sidewalks do you do you guys know where the new apartment's going in isn't that down the street? I mean, it's supposed to be going Pleasantry. in. Pleasantry. No, it, it, it's That's going right. to the Pleasantry space. Yeah, so it's in, it's this shaded area. It says building. Oh. Building oh, oh they got rid of it. Oh, okay. 42 units. So this is yeah. 40, 42 units of housing. Mm. There's a rumor there's going to be a restaurant. Now, it's not all approved yet, is it? Has it all gone through all the review? It has not. Okay, yeah, I mean... I think planning hard. planning board has reviewed it some, but I didn't know if there were decisions. Okay. So this this is the goal. Um, the driveways actually the driveways actually go away. Right. Um, on Amy Street, and they actually go away on University Drive. There, so there's a driveway. Actually, there isn't one on University Drive, but the um, the service road goes away because the service road is actually on private property. So the whole is the service road going to go away the length of the service road or just for this segment of it? Just on this one property. So this one property includes like the whole that whole building that include in the pleasant trees, building, right? but then it also has like the real estate office and, and the insurance and office and and then. What's the next thing after that? And uh, no, yeah. it's, it's just going to be the building that has Cheryl Nina, the insurance offices. Right, right. Yeah, that yeah. building and the pleasant trees goes away. But okay. the one next to it, that the which is, um, isn't that where they have like um, and the bike exchange and the ROTC, I think. Thing. That's further down, though. 
Right. But that's right next to it, isn't it? No. Anyway, the right. service yeah. road will be there. Remain yeah. there. Right. Yeah. There's kind of a vacant lot between this lot, these two right. lots. And yeah. Right. And there were some plans originally. I mean, I remember looking back maybe around like 2005 or something. Like there were plans to like change, like to get rid of the whole um, access road originally. There were. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not. Design. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. No, the no. Are good. But uh, questions sure. um, that come to mind: the north west corner of that roundabout. Where are those? Uh, what's the reasoning for that yes. um, footpath? Because there's no footpath that goes beyond that up on University Right, right? it's all wetland up there. So yeah. what's the kind of reasoning for that? Are you looking just to cross the road up there? Yeah, well, this this new building with the housing units, yeah, it goes all the way to the town line just about. Right. So there'll be an exit of this building farther west, and they can walk down the sidewalk in front of the building. Mm -hmm. And I'm instead of backtracking I'm... around, they can just cross here and then go down and cross over. Okay, but then just, you've got the and, uh, you've got the bleed lane that goes up beyond those crossings, right? Or, or what I call a bleed. I, I don't know the um, is that a bike path part to it, just below your cursor, right here. So that's the crossing, but then you've got the bit above it. This here, and the, well, that's the uh, sorry to the right of that is probably that that bit oh. right there. Yeah, that's the chicken lane. Yeah. Okay. That's so, a cool name. What does it mean? The chicken lane. They're scared to go around the roundabout. This is, this is for bicyclists who want to get off the road and not go through uh, the roundabout. Right, like the like we've got those a little bit on the um, Triangle Street roundabout. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right. Now I did have a question about looking again at that what that sidewalk on the northwest that's going from from the Hadley section of Amity right over to University Drive this the north one is um so the bus stop there's currently a southbound bus stop on North University Drive I believe it's a little past this so will there be a pedestrian I realize that that's going to be like UMass property I guess but is there gonna I, I thought that part of the plan and part of the reason to have the crossing here right because there's no crossing here currently. Correct. Like the, the crossing is here and it's here. And there isn't even a crossing here. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I'm I'm mark I'm I'm viewing it and I'm doing it with my mouse and you can't see what I'm doing. But <laughs> but there's a crossing on the town side of Amity and there's a crossing on like the South University Drive. And those are the only two crossings mm -hmm. currently. And they we don't have the other two crossings. Right. Um right. These are so so is there going to be something along on the on the west side of north university just like for the a foot area like accessing the bike the bus the bus stop no right because the bus but, stop i mean just for accessibility like if we're going to build a sidewalk here like i feel like it would also ideally be extended so that it can go to the bus stop and then for example like any person mm -hmm. with mobility challenges or anything would have because currently right now the bus stop is just grass and there's not any benches or anything tracy, i even see people on the curb tracy i think guilford's pointer is near a bus pull off yes the bus yeah. the the southbound bus stop moves through the intersection to right here oh it's not going to be up on the north end of the intersection okay. oh, yeah. all right. and then the 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 northbound bus stop still stays where it is now Mm -hmm. And that has a bit of a pull off. Well, that has it? a pull off now. That's what this is. Okay. And um, so, what are you? I'm just thinking, like on Amity, what are the the islands? Are they raised structures or are they just painted? Not the central island, the Peter. These yeah. islands. Yeah. They're they're raised. Okay. But I just feel you know. Given the offset of the roundabout, people might just end up trying to fly on through. But if you're raising it, then it will at least discourage that. Yes, it's raised. So are okay. they are they raised in a way that they can be driven over by like trucks? So they're not like totally flat, but like a little bumpy, but still. Um, 
where you where you see these islands here and here and at each of the crosswalks they are raised and trucks do not have to drive across them you'll you'll see some little like painted areas here those oh, are the, right. those are the areas you will see trucks tracking across okay and Guilford is the middle part raised as well, or is it um, similar to the triangle street roundabout in terms of the middle? So the middle, you have the truck apron, which is this brick part here. That's the truck apron. Truck apron. Okay. And then, yes, this part here is raised and it could be, uh, UMass has some plans for that. Let me see if I... Uh... I thought they were going to erect a giant sculpture there, some former bicycle committee chair. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it was going to be Lord Jeffrey oh. Amherst, personally. Oh, who made that? That's pretty. So, UMass. <laughs> well, this is from UMass's consultant. Nice. So this is their rendering. This will be the center island, but they're talking about putting something else here. Not trees. So, I mean, I do worry sometimes, right, because... It seems like a few of our roundabouts, or maybe I noticed up near Atkins too, that there are some larger trees in the middle of the roundabout. Doesn't can't that obstruct the views? The it it, it does. Right? That's the point. It's <laughs> yes. No, but also, but I'm also saying just for okay. I mean, it seems like it's safer if you can see the whole thing. But no, hmm. no, 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 because then you think it's you can go through it. Um, yes, you want to have an obstruction so you go around it. So this rendering, though, it doesn't have the fourth crosswalk. No, right. it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have the fourth one. That's and really... so that that stuff that's like where that white car is on the, isn't that wetland? Are you guys going to have issues with that? No, the, the wetland is back in this area back here. Oh, okay. All right, cool. But, but, excuse me. Is so, I'm sorry. Awesome? So are we looking on this drawing, if you go to the right, are you looking north or south? Because where the sign is, is, is the sign moving? Yeah, does the yes. sign move? Yeah, the, the sign's moving over. This is the this is North University. Okay, got it. This is South University. This is going into Amherst. This is going into Hadley. And you're not so, taking that house out on the corner, are you? Uh, no, the oh, this, okay. that's private property. I know, but like I don't know about that house. That's where yeah. you stop for beer pong. <laughs> that's where you where you stop for beer pong on yeah. your uh, bicycle yeah. journey. But wait, wait, Guilford, you never um finished the um the comment regarding where the main entrance and exit for the new forty two unit housing complex is going to be. Is it going to be on University further down? You know, towards so, Big Law. Uh, Guilford, or... you just went on your email, but okay. I just did that. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, so he, here, this is the corner of the new housing development. Right. So you know where the town line is in, at Amherst? Yes. So that's going to be the entrance to the new housing development. So it'll be farther away from this intersection. Uh -huh. I mean, right. the end. Is, is, isn't the town line, because when you're on that road and it becomes Rocky Hill Road, is, isn't it sort of where the, the road narrows and there's wetlands on both sides, like the actual... What's the back entrance that's already there, pretty much, right? Right. Well, there's a few entrances, and I and the one thing furthest back one is Pleasant Trees had been complaining about this. People would cut through sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Okay. Let me get you. Let me get you a map of the. Oh, and then a follow-up on the um, the vehicle entrance and exit. Yes. Oh. I think we lost Christine, that's what. No, she's here. Yeah, no, I think she just lost her voice. Oh. Yeah. oh, I can't, yeah. So this is the intersection we're talking about. North is up, south right. is down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, these are the two lots that are going to be developed. So the entrance to the new building is going to shift this way to the property. Oh, even further right. west. Okay. And then there's going to be a, an entrance exit lined up here. Okay. So in line with the hangar? Yes. Uh, okay. okay, so they're going to take on that wetland part 
uh, one, what, 13B27? Yeah. They're, they're actually, <laughs> yeah, he owns all three of these. So, uh, okay. So in the, in the renderings, right, in the one you just showed us, the really pretty consultant one, it had the bus, it had a bus shelter for the- yeah, That's the existing bound. one. That's the existing- there is, there is no bus shelter there now. Well, I mean- yeah. They want they one. They say current stop. But then is there going to be one on the southbound too? I yeah. imagine so. Everyone. But that, see, that's like UMass could be funding the one on the north, but then the south is, that's more of a UMass Transit PBTA question, I guess. But Well, PBTA just gives us the bus shelters and we put oh, them. Oh, okay. Uh, who, so yeah, so oh. who's providing them the money for this then? This, this project? Is it all state funded? We're hoping to get a grant from the state to fund it. Otherwise, it's probably not going to move forward. Okay. That makes sense. Now, so oh. the Disability <laughs> Access Committee had asked about some of the crossings and making them more straight, you they, know, than these angled crossings. Is it They want them more perpendicular, yeah. Yeah, so the one on the south, like that's nice and short. So that one actually, we can't really see it with the trees, but... The, they all have islands, like all four of the approaches mm -hmm. have those little islands, which is great. Um, but they are, are angled a bit. Can they be straighter? They can be. It just, you just need to have to pull it back. So uh -huh. you'll have maybe, you have a little, you have farther as a pedestrian to walk. So they just get pulled back. I mean, I think just for the, I mean, for example, the one at Triangle, you know, some of the crossings at Triangle, like are these really, challenging angles just in terms of like if you are visually impaired or completely you know uh, blind that it's not very intuitive for you to have to mm -hmm. go through islands and turn and things and so um i mean i i support um i talked to i mean i i reached out to the chair yeah. of the disability access advisory committee and it seemed like you you were open to um, moving them back a little, which I just think that there's so much to be gained by doing that just for that access. Yeah. Town no, kind of Amherst needs to update its satellite imagery. <laughs> we actually have it, but you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so whose is that lot that's to the Northwest then? You've got marked off there. Is that state? This lot this... here? Yeah. That's UMass, that's UMass, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll zoom out. Sorry, I'll zoom out. And actually, this has taken a while ago because I was in this intersection recently, and the crosswalk markings are almost completely gone. And we almost are like here too. 10, 20 years ago. <laughs> so. yeah. I think this is like I think this is like our two thousand five imagery. Um, twenty sixteen. Um, you, you. I'm not. Too sure. According to your copyright, at least, anyway. Let's see. Um, uh, maybe it I is. Wanna... Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just curious, is there going to be a pedestrian or cyclist entrance separate from the motorist entrances to that complex? To the um, housing? New housing development. Um, there is. Let me find. One, and Pleasant Trees, you know, they built, they did a lot of landscaping, and they made a very nice path that wasn't there before. Yeah, they did. Um, and they also, which I was very happy, and I emailed them about, is they also were really great about shoveling their sidewalk, <laughs> which most of the businesses along that section of university drive do not shovel their sidewalk and their private plows plow the snow onto the path it's all about the clientele tracy so <laughs> just, just so if you look at this drawing you can actually see the sidewalk this is all going to be sidewalk in front of the building okay. so you got the indents on the entry yeah right and then there's some on this side as well all all this parking that's on the street side now goes away Mm -hmm. All the parkings in the back, and this is green space and sidewalk along Amity That's Street. Cool. So every time there's an indent, pretty much, right? Every, based on the bottom, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
And then um, can you tell us a little bit about, so the signage, so it's just, it's sort of share the road signage, is that what it is? Because it's all like bike pad, bike pad, bike. No, this is just the best sheet that shows the sidewalks oh, okay. and everything. So it just No, I just meant be... with the signage. What kind of signage is there? Uh for the crosswalks, yes, they're multi bike and head on the both okay. on. So for... are there gonna be um is there are there gonna be any like RFPs or anything like that at it? I don't work here much longer, so if you want them, we can have them. I'm sorry, what? Really? By the time this is done, is it... I won't be here. So no, you can have <laughs> I mean, I do. I mean, I do feel like like the the roundabout that's at Fearing, you know, is small and it has less. Tra it has the university traffic, you know, heading towards university and leaving the campus. But this also has not only university traffic, but a lot of town traffic, including people accessing Hadley to and from Hadley. And I mean, I I do think it can right along University Drive the the university section of it right they have added a bunch of the rfbs and i oh, would yeah, sure. i would encourage them to have some of those for the crossings concluding oh, the fact I, that they uh, will be used at night right but i thought you said rfps i was like oh okay. no 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 the <laughs> RFBs yeah, yeah the rapid some, flashing beacons right. yeah yeah well, no i, I mean you, i was i don't know if you need to have happen. them I didn't know if you need to have them at all four, but no i but would think least... you need to do it out of town right so on the town side of and right. I'm not, and, and I mean, the, to, in the universe and on yeah. both sides of university, to, I don't think. To I'm Marcus's point, I'm not really sure that you need that sidewalk on the northwest. Well, no, I do see it now. But so not, that's the thing. not really it's, so much because where are you going, right? Because well, so you're you going also... to the, the, you're going to the oh, new place, right? See, that's the thing. It? Yeah. I, from, I see... from campus. So you're going yeah, from campus right. and that's why. Exactly. Yeah. But you still need to do two crossings. It's just yeah, not but, it's I not mean, three crossings, I guess. Yeah, but it, anyway. it, it's more direct, right? If you're coming from campus yeah. and you're going to that building, especially if you're going on that side of that building and you take the chicken lane or you get off and whatever, you're I think it's more for people with bikes than anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Including no. the people who use the valley bikes who don't have helmets and they don't always have a lot of biking experience. And well, I mean, not even, I'm not getting yeah, that specific. Yeah. No, no, like, no. I'm just yeah. saying, I mean, there's a lot of traffic there that's mm -hmm. the valley bikes, even though there's the signs on the UMass section of the Art Swift extension, which I've always been a little find a little ironic. But UMass has put up no bike signs on it because they want people to use the bike lane in the road. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But. So if you look at the, the drawings, each of these signs is an R R R F B. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah. They call wow, it. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So and Jason had brought up um at the last meeting, and I am interested in this too, just about how I know for accessibility, right? It's good to have the audible signals, but then at Palmeroy, for example, when I've been there, like the audible signals are going all the time. <laughs> even you know kind of all day and night whether or not there's people crossing and i That's mean I, I do wonder about i mean i haven't reached out to anybody you know in the community and i know like the commission of the blind the massachusetts commission of the blind can sometimes be a resource for that but sort of like what's the best practice like is it best there practices is, to have them beeping all the time there is seems, no best that seems sort of excessive there is no best practice so, there's a regulation that says they will be on at all times. Hmm. I mean, there are really no houses except for that. No, meeting. that's true. Yeah. Um, so you, you have to have them. The you have to have them going all the time. It just you know, and as, as you said, Kim, right? There's no residential except for the house on the corner. Except yeah, and there's the house they, on the Amity and yeah, they sleep oh, all night. The Jones property. They're awake all night anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> they are a good place to stop when you're walking to a football game because they're, they're very, they're well, very, they're very invited. They're very welcoming to even older people. And on the, on the university side of their property, right north of the house, they have the couches. They have like the big screen TV they put out there. They got the exactly. fire pit. Yeah, it's yeah, a good and, place, man. Yeah, and it's they, pretty quiet welcoming. there. It's pretty quiet there right now, but you know they'll be back. So. All right. Um, Wait, um, yeah, can we just put a like a? I guess we just 
but a thing to say that we we want this and we want it now and we support it and yeah we support I mean... it with the utmost um yeah and i mean especially if the housing project goes forward which oh, I don't even think I it think really it matters. It doesn't. Format. It doesn't matter. No, of course not. That's not a driver for well, it. Well, but me. if you don't, I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have the housing on the north side, yeah, you, you don't, don't you don't need that north sidewalk, that right. northwest sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. North I mean, that, that's like a a yeah, minute small. part no, of the it's, whole it's thing, minute. right? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole the the fact the bigger picture of this is that we get a roundabout in here, which has been sure. Which, um, like is years out of date. I mean, yeah, years in the uh, wanting. So, I mean, Tracy's right. We we did a design for this intersection, and actually the whole corridor, and we had like three roundabouts down the corridor between here and Route Nine. Yeah, and um, we just had no money for it to keep doing the right. work. Can I um, uh, one suggestion? And I just don't know how this works, but you know, um, the um bikes take full lane signs i think those are really important in all these roundabouts because i have seen in countless times and i actually got hit by a car once by some car in the intersection at triangle street um by a car trying to go around me when i was too far over to the right in in the roundabout um and so I think those signs really embolden cyclists yeah. to take the full lane and also tell cars that anything in the middle in the road takes a lane. No, no I, that, I mean that. that's so that's, and that's I mean what and, it is. and we had talked about that, and I think Gilford, I probably emailed you when I didn't realize you were on vacation, but the one down at like Stefan had heard from somebody about Pomeroy, I think, right? And yeah, do we they're have... supposed to be there. But they aren't, right? Not, I mean, yeah, last I mean, time I was there, I didn't see them. Yeah. And I um, saw... I, I had some... And I think that there... I mean, I think there have been some, like, bike crash, like, crashes with vehicles at... Yeah, Pomeroy, because, but... because cars try to, like, no, literally go around you, yeah. and there is not enough room. And I literally had someone hit me once, like, hit my my um, my um handlebars. Um, I was just like, what the yeah. hell were they trying to do? You know, really? I mean... The one, one thing I worry about just, I mean, I've seen at the triangle intersection, I've heard anecdotally from pedestrians as well as drivers who have stopped for pedestrians is that coming out of some of the roundabouts, it is some drivers tendency to want to like speed up, right? They had to slow down a lot to get to the roundabout. I mean, that's one reason that the roundabouts are safe and they don't have, there are very few fatalities at single lane roundabouts, like in the whole country, right? Because cars i mean there can be fender benders and people can hit the curbs and things like that but like people are not dying at these intersections um but that i mean i know cars that have been rear-ended downtown after the after coming out of the roundabout they stop for pedestrians at the first pedestrian crossing oh. and like people are in a hurry and they are accelerating and they don't want to stop and um so yeah i mean if and i'm assuming there'll be like the signage in advance but if there's if there's ways to discourage that um so but so i think so it sounds like we would take a motion like in favor of this project mm -hmm. and as as marcus says it's you know been talked about for a long time it will make a huge improvement for safety as well as for traffic flow which is a mess right now with yeah. as we talked about the left turns um and i i like kim's idea about it you know it encouraging like bakes take the full lane signs um and i do i would personally support to the disability access advisory committee's request to like back them up a little and make them straighter the crossings just so that it's easier yeah for people and i and it doesn't seem i don't know Gilfrey. i mean you wouldn't have to back it up too far right you but don't. Even... the only issue is when you back it up you actually allow more than one car to be between the crossing uh... I see what you're saying, right? Just to your right. point about the um, stopping, yeah. Yeah, there's just, it just gives you too much stacking distance in there. Sometimes you get two cars in there. Wow. Which can be dangerous to the um, pedestrians, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's just, 
the way the way roundabouts were meant to function is is that the car comes up the car comes up to the pedestrian yeah. crosswalk and then moves forward and you can yield again and one whole car fits in that area oh, so the second car is pretty much guaranteed to stop outside mm -hmm. or closer to outside the, the pedestrian way mm -hmm. that's kind of so but you're just going to have maybe two cars being in this little queue area with the sidewalk farther back mm -hmm. so i mean did i mean i get i mean there are guidances right about there like is accessibility and roundabouts and i don't know i know that the disability access advisory committee always advises to like reach out to as i said like the mass commission of the blind or other but i mean then, i wonder like kind of what the what the balance is there um yeah. and then the curve I mean, backing them up and, and and so one issue right with the triangle roundabout is i mean are we going to need to have like wide turning lanes because that's one thing i think that's one challenge at the triangle roundabout that the ones from like east pleasant nor you know like on campus like coming down towards the center of town is that there's that really wide lane to turn on to i guess that's also like triangle to turn on to triangle just so for the emergency vehicles and so on and i think it can be one it can encourage people to go faster but it can also be sort of confusing about what that space is it's mark you know it's pay the pavement is striped but are you, do you need to have given that this is like a do you need to have like wider turning lanes for like the larger vehicles here or is that not going to be a thing i mean well, they seem to do okay at fearing right and the buses go on university drive every day and there's no issues it it is in some places it is kind of wide like this side over here is really wide that's because you need to swing out a bit and make this turn if you're a truck Okay. Oh, so there are some. So, how big are the lanes in this overall? The travel lanes. It depends. Eighteen foot, right? You got eighteen foot in the main ring. Eight, eighteen is this main circle right here. Oh, that is pretty big. And then this is actually probably another six feet on there, or. And then there's a couple of feet here and a couple of feet here, but it, the circle touches here. So it does, and it's all based on it's all based on buses and and truck turning. Right. Okay. And now, what happens to the bike lanes? Right. So if you're on campus, and you're coming south on University Drive, north south University Drive towards this intersection, on uh, the U UMass has put bike lanes there, and they put a lot of this section there. It also has like the buffered bike lanes, you know, where it has a little segment a couple yeah. of feet without the, and then but as it approaches the intersection that just ends <laughs> so to kim's point will there just be like signs about bikes taking the lane or yes yeah, so it'll be the bike bikes take the lane or you can go up on the the chicken route okay And then, and then on the south part of University Drive too, right? There's the Art Swift extension, but then there's, or I mean, on the east side of the road, there's Art Swift extension, but then there's not going to be any on-road bike lanes, per se. Um, there, there could be in the future. Don't. Yeah. Okay. Don't say never. No, of course not. Yeah, I mean, so should we just? Uh, yeah. Put up. Have a quick motion. I mean, um, what is it? I propose that uh, the TAC supports the development of a roundabout at um, University in Amity with uh, the inclusion, with the proposed inclusion of um, so bike take their takes full lane um, signs as well as uh, accommodations for the disability the same disability and access committee's recommendations All with right. regards to crossings at the roundabout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, I mean, we could just say like, with you know, well, yeah, but I, I mean, I don't want to limit us, right? No, no, no. I mean, I thing. think we could also just say like sort of best practices for yeah, yeah, yeah. accessibility, yeah. Um, including visually yeah. impaired people. 
Yeah. Um, in, including consideration of moving the crosswalks back, like losing, realizing that there's a balance or something. I don't think, yeah, whatever the recommendations With the are. signs. Folks, while you're crafting that, can I ask something? I've been listening, but I start, tried to stay out of it since I'm not a formal yeah. member of the committee, but this actually came up um, in some other parts of town. I'm just curious whether this is really addressed to Guilford, but also to the to the TAC. Um, on the west side there in front of the new development, um, it looked like a fairly small sidewalk there, narrow sidewalk. And I'm just wondering whether um, Barry and company are going to try to get something at least as wide as the 8 to 10 feet that the Swift Way provides as a, as a, as a multi-use path there on the west side. Because um, it, it, I imagine there'll be a fair amount of traffic, pedestrian traffic there too. Um, I know it, it may not want to be quite as wide as what's the Swift Way, but I, I'm wondering whether TAC has anything to say about the stuff that may be within the road right of way, but maybe also partly on Barry's property. You know, just advice to them in terms of the approvals. Does it look like a net? I, can't, I couldn't tell from the plans whether whether you were showing a four foot sidewalk or a six foot sidewalk or an eight foot sort of thing there on the on the west side south of the Amity Street. Uh, do, you, do you know, I mean, I, I'm happy to talk to Barry directly too. I, I talk to them quite often, but just what, do you know what some, the plan I mean, Guilford, isn't that some of that still um, to be determined a little bit with the taking of, with the- Well, on this, on this, on this the... so you're talking about this area right here? I'm trying to figure out what that is. Is that is that that's like, all that's sidewalk. sidewalk? It's huge. This is all sidewalk. Oh. It's a big wide plaza. Is that what I'm seeing there? It uh -huh. is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's interesting. It sounds like Barry's thinking. Okay. Uh, so it looks it's like it's about 15 feet wide. Even. Uh -huh. that, it's right? it's um actually there's a number in there. Hold on. I, trying to see it but it's really hard to I was yeah, using 16 some other feet numbers. 16 feet well that's the dimension between the oh that's that yeah yeah right 24 oh. feet if you go 24 24 feet, feet. wow yeah, yeah 24 feet the whole length okay. yeah so so i mean just may I ask, is it is the idea to have it with you know the planters and things there just it, just as long as there's a way that people feel comfortable walking bicycling whatever off the road but on that side i, I imagine hundreds of people living in this place. I'm guessing it's three to four people per per unit. They want to have some some way of getting around on foot and on possibly on bikes without actually being on the road. Is, is that is that what I'm seeing? I'm just wondering because it seems like it's important for your committee too to to make sure the folks there are able to it, it is, but the committee really doesn't have any jurisdiction on the private mm -hmm. property. Right. I understand. I understand. I couldn't tell which part was private, where the where the property line ends. It looks like it's the dark black line. Is this is the, yeah, this is the property yeah. line. Okay. And what is the width between the bituminous concrete and that? Is it is that is that what is that stuff there in that section? But is that is that grass or is it paving? This is, this is kind of a right in here is kind of a a mystical area right now because they are talking we are talking to Barry how he wants to do all this okay and then okay. It, it, it hinges on what planning says he can do now and you okay. have like applied for a grant right for this Guilford and is that correct and then you would hear back we later. have we have applied for a grant we're not sure we're going to get it or not and like they're going to make announcement in later in the fall is that right is that the yeah. time frame October November um so. Is, are you actually getting UMass to push for the grant? UMass is pushing for it. UMass has done okay, all good. the design work. Um, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, but if they want to have a decent football facility, they need a decent in way in and out, right? Actually, how about a decent football team first? Well, oh, I mean, ouch. you got you got to build, build the facilities, and they will come, right? You haven't you seen? Uh, uh, oh, sure, uh, yeah. Okay. Dreams, you know. No, no. But they well, switch it if they switch it. What's the mission of a university? But okay, <laughs> let's not go there. Um, a really good hockey team. Yeah. So, Forgive me. They need to switch to the kind of football they play 
everyone else in the world, but she actually <laughs> used your feet rather than your oh. shoulder pad. Well, that doesn't bring in the same amount of money, unfortunately, over yeah, here. So. Can, I come, can I just come back? So what I was thinking, it was the DAC kind of stuff I was thinking about that that, I, that brought my attention. So that if the, the favored place for actually ends up on the private property, um, it, it might be good to have conversations with Barry or whoever else is managing it, just so that someone who might find themselves in a wheelchair and wants to get from north, like that corner where the crosswalk is, the the, the western corner there, the western crosswalk there on Amity Street, down towards the post office, that they have a way to do it, perhaps even on Barry's property, which is I think will be what happens. You want to have some coordination yeah. there, I think. So you know, I that's, think that's what right. I just that, thank, thanks for the comment, Rob. So Marcus had proposed a resolution, um, which I think just to get back on track, right? So he had said, you know, supporting the development, the roundabout, um, you know, including as we were recommending, like the bikes take the full lane sign and accessibility with the crosswalks. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I was also thinking, I mean, I can circulate it to people, the draft, but also just to mention the features that Guilford's talking about in these plans, right? Because this 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 level of detail was not provided to the council earlier in that memo that just had that one drawing. I mean, Guilford, if you can share those with us and even that um, consultant rendering, that's that's really nice to look at too. But like, for example, we don't, not, we don't have to have this in the resolution, but I would put it in the memo in terms of like the RFBs and the the chicken lane or whatever you want to call it and moving the bus stop to the south like all those things seem really positive and adding that sidewalk on the north the northwest side um now is there going to be a chicken lane for the traffic if there are people bicycling on street on university drive like the big y segment of university drive towards the intersection is there a chicken lane there too to access the arts yeah there the is you can see in the picture yeah. okay because I saw the other one, I didn't see the. Yeah, it's just it's just hidden. It's I mean it's hidden because there's a million lines there, but it's there. okay. Northwest. So, all right. So I guess let's take a vote and then we can. Um, so, go ahead, Kim. I, yeah, I I second motion. Motion. Okay. Thanks. Okay, and then um, all right. So I will vote aye. Him, I. Marcus, I. Paul, I. Chris, okay. I. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yay. All right. So um, TSO had asked us to, I don't think they have a time frame when they're going to be talking about this again, but um, I'll write something up and I'll, I can circulate it around. And uh, I, thank you. Thank you, Guilford, for talking about the project. And, no problem. Uh, and then we take this motion. And can you please send us the maps too? So sure. That'd be great. Okay. Um, I know it, we're getting close to seven. It's like eight minutes to. We should talk about when we're gonna have our next meeting. But then also I was hoping, uh, Chris, if you have any updates about this back to school event on the twenty fifth of August and if there's gonna be safe routes to school, do we think? There is, um, in theory, but I have not sort of sealed the deal with, you know, are we supplying a table? All the all that kind right. of thing. Right. No, so, I see. Yeah, but but yes, there is, um, and it's, um, yeah, it's so just it's still at Kendrick a, Park, is that right? Yeah. Where is it? Kendrick Park. Oh, cool. So school is starting a little earlier this year. Like it's starting on Monday, August 26th, K to 12, oh, first to 12. And then, so this event is going to actually be on a Sunday, Sunday, August 25th. Um, do you know when that event is yet, Chris? No? No. Okay. I mean, I would think that, you know, because the family center, the ARPS family center, they also give out the backpacks and so on there and um, that maybe they would know sort of the main time frame or what they're telling families. <laughs> um, but the, um, but as I had mentioned to you, right, the, the town manager had asked for the street to be closed, um, I think from like three to eight or something. 
So I'm assuming it's just like two hours of that block or three hours. Yeah, I've got to shoot an email. I just haven't done it. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um. All right. Well, let's let's just get on our calendar the next um date for attack meeting, and then I then I think we're probably going to end. But I mean, I would really like to get back to some of these other items, including the transportation commission and so on. Um, but we can save that for the next meeting. So. Um. So, I mean, Guilford, is there anything else that you know of, like, coming from TSO? I mean, I think TSO is only meeting on, like, the 19th and, I mean, I'm sorry, they're meeting on the 15th, and then they're going to maybe meet on the 29th. They're going to talk about the, TSO is going to talk about the committee, the, how to, either to rearrange the TAC or not rearrange the TAC. So, is that actually going to TSO? Because... The I last thing going... I had heard from the town manager is that it was never referred to TSO. It's supposed to go somewhere, and I imagine it would come back to TSO at some point. Okay. All right. I think you've oh. talked about all the road projects we have right now. So Okay. Um, yeah. I mean... Do we think, I mean, if we, I guess if we have other safe routes to school updates or anything, maybe we could save a date in August if we have things to cover for that or like people sure. are available. I'm not available on, so today's the first. I mean, we could do, we could tentatively meet on the 15th. Oh, Guilford, wait, when did you say you're away, Guilford? Are you away the 8th and the 15th? The 15th and the... Uh... 15th and the 22nd. So, so then the next ninth. Yeah. yeah. On the 29th. Sure. Okay. Let's do that. Let's just keep me. it open just in case. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think that makes sense too. Um, I may, I may be down in Atlanta again, but um, okay. I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. And then also, so one of the things I had wanted to follow up on too is so in the capital improvement plan, um, I'm I'm not really sure how much you know TAC would be involved with this, but um, the the JCPC they had recommended the sixty thousand dollars for um, speed so radar signs and like around safe routes to school and things, including like one of the things right that TAC had asked for was to have more signage or have any <laughs> have signage um, designated school zones. Um, at the middle school and the high school, which we currently don't have. And then also look to um, potentially extend the hours that they, the school zone speed limit is in effect, which is 20 miles an hour. And otherwise, right, it's the underlying speed limits, which in some of the school areas is up to like 40 miles per hour, at least. Um, and so the way the JCPC and the way it ended up in the final capital budget was that it was going to be something that the DPW and the police would work on and like make some decisions. I don't know, Guilford, have you heard anything about that or where it could go? Or... Not much. Um, we've talked about it a little bit and I, we've basically said the council just needs to decide what they want to do. So does, so when the capital, when the budget the capital budget sent it to DPW and the police. Does the council still need to weigh in on the details of it? Or? The council has to vote it. If we make oh, changes, I see. If we make changes to this, if we add the school zones, they need to vote that addition. If they change the the timing of the lights, they need to vote that as well. Because when we do school zones, there's always the time light time. The light timing is in there as well, so okay. they need to do it. Okay. Um. All right. See, I think that, well, somebody I talked to wasn't sure that it had to go back to the council, like whether it was just kind of on staff hands now. It might, so. I mean, they might think that. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I yeah. mean, because the council is not typically involved when you change like speed limits, are they? The council must. Oh, be they are. Okay. They're in oh, right. okay. the public way. I wasn't sure. I mean, I wasn't sure what. Any what any do. regulatory, <laughs> any regulatory sign, okay. they have to vote it. Okay. I got it. Okay. All right, thank you. So, um, yeah. Oh no, Kim. I just had um in our last couple minutes, I just wanted to um 
ask about um, Guilford about the Kendrick Park. It looks really great. Like there's been a lot of improvements on the road, and I just I'm just curious when will that be done before the end of um, oh well, before UMass starts essentially. Uh, might be. Oh. <laughs> I just want to say also, I, I told Paul that I really appreciated the work being done there. So th thanks, Gilbert. And also, thank to all of you for having me at the meeting. I've, I've got to go now, but. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to hop off too. But yeah. thanks, but thanks, th Rob. thanks, Gilbert. I want to thank you particularly for the work. You're welcome. Yeah, it's, thanks, really, it's really great that all that. Um, and I'm Yeah, no, Kendrick Park is looking amazing. I agree. Uh, crosswalks going in and whatever. It's really awesome. So, when do you anticipate that will all be finished, Guilford? Um, the contractor's <laughs> not been moving with the the most z zill. Is they that have. Not, that's why I was asking it? because it seems like things are going kind of. I mean, everything is there. Pretty much, and then um, we we still have to order lights, so lighting wow. will not be done, but everything else should be done pretty much in October, definitely by November. Right, because there's also a bathroom going in there now, too. Right? That's not my project. No, oh, I know. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Anyway, cool. That's great. Well, cool. Well, guys. All right, so good. That sounds like yeah. great for the 29th. Thank you. All right. See you, guys. Thanks. All right, thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.